Hey guys, it's Michael here. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I built a bead breaker for popping old ATV tires off the rims. We'll work for motorcycle rims and tires as well. Um, anyways, there's a few extra little tidbits of information in this video about fabrication and welding. So if you're interested in the video, stick around and check it out. So here's a link to a video you guys probably never seen. I posted about a year ago and no one ever seemed to watch it. I took this old drill press from the early 40s and retrofitted it. It was on its last legs and uh, retrofitted it to put a variable speed drive LED light and a tachometer on it. So if you're interested in that project, check it out. So a big majority of the metal used in this uh, bead breaker was uh, salvaged. And uh, here's another link to a video that you guys probably haven't seen as well. Uh, maybe a few of you have. It's where to salvage cheap to free metal. And uh, it kind of gives you some good ideas where to start sourcing out metal in your community for welding projects. So check that link out when you get time. This little titanium 45 plasma torch has been an awesome improvement to the shop here. So here's a little fabrication tip. I'm drilling a series of holes in this two piece of flat bar and I don't want them drifting around so I drill the first hole, run a bolt through it, tighten it down and the rest of the holes will all be in line and won't have to worry about those uh, plates migrating apart and not having my whole pack lined up. Little tip there. So this next part I actually need to have some nestable tubing. I have some inch and a half and some inch and a quarter and because of the weld seam and the inside diameter doesn't fit quite right so I'm using a little die grinder to clean up the burrs inside and the weld and usually with a little bit of work you can make short pieces kind of nest like this so a uh, little tip for fabrication. So this next tool coming up most people think of as a carpentry tool. It's a 12 inch combination square. I use it for layout all the time. It's one of my go-to hand tools for when I'm doing welding projects. So if you don't have one, I'd recommend picking one up. They're like 15 bucks. So here I'm just tack welding all the four corners before I actually do the full welds across here just because uh, the heating up metal can bend and warp crazy. So uh, it's one of those things to keep in mind is tack weld all your corners before you make your full passes. So this next part is probably not going to make much sense, but those parts I'm bolting on there are bolted on some inch and a half stock. I'm welding on and clamping on some more inch and a half stock up here. But later in the build, those uh, two arms that are hanging off there, I actually want to have clearance for some more inch and a half stock to go in without hanging up. So I probably should have just clamped in there some 16th inch uh, shim stock and just welded around it to give it more clearance. I didn't do that. I ended up just welding this like this and uh, realizing later I needed clearance. So I took those two arms with the holes on them bent them out and uh, put them in the vise again and bent it around some shim stock uh, to kind of why I'm out a little bit to give a little more clearance. It'll make a little more sense in the video later. So this part I'm actually tack welding up and uh, finishing all the welds on is the actual true bead breaker part. This is the part that pushes down on the tire to bust the bead. And uh, this is the part I needed clearance on those arms for because all those holes this has adjustments on it. I want to be able to slide it in and change the bolt holes arrangement without fighting it very much. So that's why I needed clearance on that original part I welded. All right, busting out some more salvaged metal here. And uh, check out this next tool. There it is again, the combination square. I use that thing all the time, like I said, when I'm welding projects. <laughs> What's it say? Well, it says, I love it when a plan comes together. All right, you guys, that's a little inspiration from the A-Team there. So I'm taking a little bit of time to round off the metal edges here just because it's nice to take off any sharp edges or burrs, and uh, you'll be a lot happier with the project in the long run. So this is a pretty common sight when I go to use the quad truck here. The old worn-out tires are just shot, and they don't hold air no matter what. So I'm going to use that new bead breaker I just made and mount those fresh tires on the back of this thing. It should be good to go. Almost off the ground. Good job. Look at those. These are going to be a hell of a lot nicer. All right, moment of truth. First time trying this thing out. Aha, worked like a charm. <laughs> Look at all the slime on here. Damn slime never worked ever in this tire. I 
I'd have to say that's a success. I kind of show you guys these drawings I came up with before I actually built this thing. They're pretty awful. So I built this thing on the fly making the video. And uh, I usually get more dimensions and things like that for my drawings, but <laughs> this is kind of what I came up with. <laughs> pretty bad basis to uh, base your project off of, but hey, it works. There it is. Not sure if you guys can see the sidewall, but check this out. Yeah, they're definitely overdue to be changed. I vow to never use that crappy slime ever again. I've never really actually ever had it seal a tire, and maybe slow down a leak, but it's just a mess. This is kind of stuff I'm sure the tire shops curse you for when you bring it in a tire to them. It's just a mess. All right, firing up the trusty Titanium 200 for some more welding. This thing's been a solid little welder so far. I've had it for about a year and I've had zero complaints about it. It's definitely a hell of a good little machine. So this part I'm welding on here actually has two functions. One, it's an extra brace for the upright support to give it a little more strength. And it's also a handle holder when the thing's not in use, take up less room. Here I'm laying on some crusty spray paint, but uh, hey, it does the job. As you see, it's painted now. Um, welded on this nice little extra brace on here that works as a storage for the handle. Keeps it all vertical. And keep the tire irons right in here, which is convenient. Got some rubber feet for an up and coming video for electromagnetic grinding station. That video is coming up hopefully soon. And I'm gonna use some of these rubber feet for the base of this thing just to finish it off. Mount on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cut some corners, half assed it, didn't paint the bottom. Hey man, it's been a busy week between work, family, and YouTube trying to get all this done. But we're gonna mount some feet on here. And final part of the video is uh, show it popping off a bead on a motorcycle tire and wrap up the video. All right, so I got my nephew's uh, CR80 wheel on here. It's the one we did the 120cc XR engine in. Got some fresh tires for him, so we're gonna see how this thing does. There we go. Popped it off in there, no problem. Alright you guys, I hope you learned something in the video. I know I did. I realized that building a bead breaker is a hell of a lot easier than it is to mount a damn quad tire back on the rim. Uh, that was frustrating and I probably didn't have quite long enough tire irons, but I'm just not going to mess with that in the future. I won't be taking my tires back to Walmart because they shredded the hell out of the rims. Uh, I have a quad I'm going to be putting tires on pretty soon and I'm not going to take it back to them. But I'll probably pay somebody else 10 or 15 bucks to mount each tire. It's probably worth it to the frustration to not to deal with that for me. Um, but anyways, this thing will get used a lot around here. It's not a lost cause because I ride motorcycles and all my friends do too. So we're switching out tires all the time on dirt bikes and this would be nice to break the beads on those things still. And because it has about a 10 to 1 ratio on here that I'll probably be using it for other other apparatuses or something down the road because if I want to put a lot of leverage on something I can adapt this with different parts and pieces use it for some other project down the road I don't know what it'll be yet but maybe you'll see it in another video anyways if you guys enjoyed the video hit like and subscribe until next time guys take care bye